The most common question that I get asked is, which lens should I get? I want a lens that captures everything, wide enough for landscapes, wide enough for vlogs, but I also want to do street photography and maybe some portrait shots. That lens does not exist until now. <laughs> This is the Sony 20 to 70 millimeter f4 G lens. And if you are looking for your very first zoom lens to kind of do it all, to vlog, shoot landscapes, even do some portrait shots, this is probably the lens to get. Now in the past, whenever someone asks me, which lens should I get? I always recommend a 24 to 70 standard zoom lens. Doesn't have to be Sony, doesn't have to be Canon, just a 24 to 70 zoom lens because that lens kind of covers all the classic focal lengths from a wide shot at 24 millimeters to a medium shot at 50 millimeters, all the way to a zoom shot at 70 millimeters for tight portrait shots. But if you want to vlog with a 24 to 70 lens, it's a little bit difficult to do because 24 millimeters isn't necessarily the widest. I mean, it's wide for most things like landscapes, sure. But for vlogs, when you're holding up the camera at 24 millimeters, like it could look a little bit too tight, which is why for vlogs, I always recommend using a 16 to 35 zoom lens, which is the lens that I have. And with that combo, you kind of pretty much cover everything. Like you have your wide zoom lens, 16 to 35, and then you have your 24 to 70 zoom lens, two zoom lenses to cover pretty much most projects. However, that's two lenses to cover all the focal lengths that you need to complete a project and maybe two lenses that you just don't really want to pay for. But with the new Sony 20 to 70 millimeter, it's kind of a great substitute if you don't want to carry two lenses, you just want to carry one lens. Now you might be wondering, is 20 millimeters wide enough to vlog with? Well, let's find out. Let's just grab oh. a bunch of people there. Hey, a whole bunch of people here. Oh. All four of us. Oh my gosh, uh. there's all this extra room over here. It all wow. fits. That's crazy. Spacious. Perfectly fine. Yeah, Spacious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not all the way extended. This is me extended. And I have short arms. Like a T-Rex, I have very short arms. <laughs> that's so. really wide. Yeah, that's wider than right? I thought. So the Sony 20 to 70 millimeter lens, very spacious. That's great. That's great. <laughs> all right, so now we're going to do a range test of this lens. Uh, I'm on the Vegas Strip, and we are filming at 20 millimeters right now. Nice wide shot of the Palazzo. And I'm going to zoom in all the way at 70 millimeters. Now, some of the main things that you need to know about this lens, it weighs 488 grams, very light. The lens also reduces focus breathing, which is this weird focusing when you're trying to shift one focus from one plane to another. It just looks really odd. And with some cameras, there's this feature called a focus breathing compensation, which crops in on the image to reduce that weird focusing. But with the 20 to 70 lens itself, focus breathing is vastly reduced, even when using cameras that don't have focus breathing compensation. Minimum focus distance is 9.8 inches, so you can get really close close on objects and capture all the details. Like the shot over here of some moss on a tree. Like look at all the details of this image. Like this was shot at 70 millimeters at 9.8 inches. And it's so sharp too. Like it's not even a G master lens, it's a G lens. And you still see all the details of this image. And the last main thing you need to know is price, of course, it's gonna run you 1,099 US dollars and 1,499 Canadian dollars. Some other notable features of this lens has an iris lock switch, an aperture ring that's de-clickable, two function buttons that's customizable, a 72 millimeter filter thread, is dust and moisture resistant, and has a 60% faster autofocus speed performance compared to the original Sony 24 to 70 G Master lens, thanks to the two XD linear motors. Oh, and uh, the focus ring is really smooth, like butter. The zoom ring, maybe not not so much, but definitely the focus ring. Okay, so uh, you probably want to see a comparison uh, to see how wide the Sony 20 to 70 lens is compared to the 24 to 70 G Master lens and the 16 to 35 G Master lens. Well, this is the Sony 20 to 70 G lens right now. This is how wide it is. Is that is that 20? Yeah, it's at 20 millimeters, and uh, yeah, it's fairly wide. Now let's switch over to the Sony 24 to 70. All right, we got the Sony 24 to 70 G Master lens. It's a tighter shot, but uh, still kind of wide. Definitely not as wide as the 20 to 70. But now let's switch over to the 16 to 35. All right, and now 
We are using the Sony 16 and 35 G Master lens, and it's obviously a lot wider. Uh, the only thing with wide lenses like the 16 and 35 is that at the corners, you kind of see how it, it lengthens my arm, like very unnaturally. Like that's that's the only problem when vlogging at 16 millimeters. But at 20 millimeters, that's right there. That's, uh, that's plenty wide, that's about arm's length, and my arm doesn't look as warped when filming at 16. And so, there you go. Oh, it's just it's been squatting for like five minutes doing this comparison. Ugh. All right, let's take a look at some photos. Here's an image shot with a 20 to 70 G lens, and here is an image shot with the 24 to 70 G Master Lens Mark II. Obviously, you do get a blurrier background with the 24 to 70 G Master Lens Mark II because of that 2.8 aperture, but the 20 to 70 G lens isn't too bad and is absolutely usable. I mean, even at f4, you still get that blurry background because I was shooting at 70 millimeters. Now let's zoom in to see the sharpness, and the 20 to 70 G lens is incredibly sharp despite it not being a G Master lens. But this image here, shot with the 24 to 70 G Master Lens Mark II, looks very similar. Now in terms of 4K video, both lenses produce very similar looking video. Of course, the 24 to 70 G Master lens will give you that blurrier background, but still, the video shot with the 20 to 70 G lens has some really nice bokeh as well. Now, for those of you wondering if this lens is a good choice to capture more casual things like family videos and photos, Yes, this lens absolutely can. In fact, here's a few clips of an upcoming video that I shot entirely on the Sony 20-70G lens and the Sony a7R5, so stay tuned for that. But yes, this lens can absolutely capture stunning, videos and photos for those casual moments. Uh, all right, so some pros and cons. Pros, again, I love how lightweight this lens is. Like it's great for handheld shooting. It's really great for gimbal work. Reduced focus breathing is really nice as well. And of course, I love the focal range of this lens. I mean, 20 millimeters to 70 millimeters, like that should do you good to cover most projects. Like with this one lens, you can vlog at 20 millimeters, and if you wanna capture B-roll shots, maybe tighter shots of certain things, you can go to 50 millimeters or even all the way to 70 millimeters. Like that range is so versatile, I think will make a lot of people very happy. And not just for video too, like I think this is gonna be great for a lot of photographers out there. Like if you wanna shoot landscape shots, if you wanna shoot portraits and weddings, like this is actually a viable lens to keep in your camera bag if you want one lens to cover it all. Like that focal range kind of blows my mind, and I wish this lens came out when I first started because this would be the first lens that I would totally get. And the only con about this lens is that it doesn't shoot down to f2.8. Again, I've said shooting at f4 and higher is totally fine, but there is something to be said shooting at f2.8. I know, sorry, I'm playing devil's advocate. And yes, this lens may not be the best in low light situations, but I've got my a7S III, low light king. So when it comes to low light situations, for me at least, not a problem. I mean, if this lens did shoot all the way down to f2.8, like it would be a much bigger, thicker, heavier lens. And I think Sony made the right decision to keep this lens at f4 and not 2.8 because the size and the weight of this lens is just is so, so nice. And so to finally answer the question, which lens should I get if you have a Sony camera, it is definitely the Sony 20 to 70 millimeter f4 G lens. Gotta return you, gotta return this guy. Gonna miss it, I might buy it. I think I might buy it just for gimbal work. Well, if you have any questions about this lens, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.